Hi, so for some time I haven't been using behavior trees and I wanted to create a video to go over the reasons why and what alternative way am I creating AI characters. I got a lot of questions about this while freelancing because a lot of people automatically assume that I'm just gonna use behavior trees when I create AI characters, but I actually have a way more, I think, simple and better scaling way to create AI that I'm gonna go over that I think work a bit better than behavior trees and we're gonna go over all of the reasons why I think behavior trees are kind of overly engineered, a bit too complex and confusing to debug stuff like that. So we're going to cover all of that. So let me then minimize this. And in this scene, I'm just going to create a really simple or I'm just going to show a character that I created that's using just simple state based way of moving around of its behavior. And then I'm going to show you basically the details of how this AI works. So if I press play, it's really simple. I'm just using a pre-made uh, action. So he comes close to me and then he starts jumping. So he basically has two states so attack and chase if i start going away from him he's just gonna chase me really simple this is one of the simplest things that you can do with ai okay so for the classes for the ai we have the AI character and then just our enum for the states so simple attack chase really basic stuff so now let's go into the character and let's see what blueprints we have so how the system that i usually use works is like this so you have your tick behavior which is basically in which state are we and then what actions are happening on that tick and that's it you can use this tick in different ways it doesn't even have to be a tick it can be a timer you can do whatever it is but this is the most basic default kind of setup that i would have and then we have one function and that function is just for changing the state. So when you're going from one state to the other, technically I could just do something like this, like, okay, set state. Uh, if you're chasing, you've hit some condition, just set it to attack. You could do something like that. But the issue there is that there is cleanup and initialization of the new state that you want to do before you start doing ticking, which is usually for like tracking when you need to switch to a new state or having to like, evaluate something over time, stuff like that. Let's then go to this uh, state change and let's just get general feel of how this system works so you have a function that says what is my new state and is it equal to the old state so this is kind of optional you can do this or not do this but if you're re-triggering a setting new state that is already the state that you are in maybe you don't want anything to happen basically i'm already in this state so don't do anything uh, after we check this we then do two things in here and two things that we do is clean up the old state so sometimes when you create more complex behavior what's gonna happen is you're gonna to clean something up so for example in here of when we come close enough to the player and when we start changing the state to attack and our old state is chase we just want to say okay we stop any movement from the AI controller and by the way this whole thing you can also move to AI controller I just put it in a character just to kind of show the simple version of this but you can put it in the AI controller where you usually want to have AI logic stuff after we clean up whatever our old state was you can see here it says AI state so we're using this and then new state we are using basically whatever new state is from the function and in here we now have attack state state and chase state now you see that we have these collapse graphs everywhere and the reason i'm doing this is this is how i would generally do it even if right now it's not necessary because there is not just enough code here so if i expand this uh, the code here is really really simple there is nothing much happening but when it gets more and more complex you don't want to have a huge thing in here where you have like a bunch of different states and they are very longer there is very much stuff so usually what i do is just collapse them uh, i can control z here so to collapse them you can just right click collapse nodes in here i would probably do some something like chase all state or something like that and then you can have something like that pretty simple so when we go to the attack state we just need to change our actual state to attack so we can then change whatever happens in here and stuff like that and we are just playing our jump animation and then when you go to the chase state we are just playing animation for the chase and then move to actor we just start a simple function so this is really a simple so this event basically manages how we move to the actor now this could be way more complex we could do like move to a location for example or let's do uh something like this we can do something more complicated maybe something like this and then we can do an input where we have a goal actor and if it's none or something then we just go to a location where we maybe last saw the character so maybe we have like a goal actor in here you can imagine this uh in behavior tree you have your blackboard and in there you have your values for like a goal location actor whatever stuff so this is just your basic variable so advantage of this system is you're basically just doing blueprints you're not doing anything special you don't need like a special framework of behavior trees where you have a bunch of tasks blackboard conditions evaluator sequencer selectors you don't have to work in that paradigm which i find very confusing when you start creating complex ais where debugging just takes hours and in here i find it pretty easy generally 
but yeah, you can make it very more complex for this simple example we just need like move to actor who is the actor player character now if you want your ai to be more complex where maybe ai can attack other ai or there is a like, multiplayer game multiple players of course you wouldn't do it like this it's just literally the simplest example and let's go back in here so we were doing state change so we have these two things and when we go to the trace state we have uh the plane animation of just running forward and that's kind of the whole loop so as you can see this is the whole thing there is not much in here so if i expand this one there is a little bit code in here and then I can expand this one also. I also didn't bother with creating functions or uh, because for example this is the same code as in here we're just checking this and the player would probably put in a function or something but yeah we're basically checking when we're chasing every tick check if you are close enough to the player if you are you go to attack state and in here you check if you're close enough to the player then do nothing but if you're farther than 400 units then you go to the trace state. So really really simple stuff how to handle it and what's good about this with this system I was creating really complex stuff there is like a boss character that is a griffon that can fly around the character, dive to the character, shoot him with projectiles. He can be in like a stun state where you can hit him while he's on the ground. So there is a complex character that I created with this and I couldn't even imagine doing that in behavior trees. That would be a complete nightmare, especially because there is some more complex stuff. For example, when the griffon is diving, there is stuff where he can maybe get stuck. So there is like whole behavior stuff for him to find his way around if he gets so into like weird geometry stuff. Uh, he can also dive be below the character, so he needs to continuously check if he is above or below so he can then find his way above the character stuff like that doing that in behavior tree i think would be a complete nightmare but on this project was for a client so i cannot like show the details of it or how it looks but that's kind of the general stuff that you can do and i still even like almost a year after i did that project i still remember how generally the blueprint looked so if i came back to that project it would be so easy to get back into it add more features to the griffon and for example in here if we do idle maybe we can do i don't know heal something characters are doing something we just saw that and it's just another thing in here and you would have your collapse thing which is idle tick and then heal tick and just it's pretty linear to add new stuff and it's not that uh, complex when i work with behavior trees it feels like this you starts pretty easy especially because you have a bunch of pre-made tasks for you so move to location move to actor i think it has like rotate towards the actor stuff like that so you have or like wait nodes you have a few really really basic tasks so behavior trees start really simple but then if you just start going a little bit complex it goes like this it's almost impossible to work with it. you have to do so much uh, strategizing and debugging and creating some weird rules around it because yeah doing anything more and more complex becomes so difficult to work in while with this system even though it does over time become more and more I mean everything is going to be more and more complex and take more and more time as there is more code it feels something like this it feels like it's going something like that so even though i was working with that character i mentioned and it maybe was complexity of i don't even know maybe in here it definitely is harder to add new stuff but it's not that much harder than when we where we started off while with behavior trees i feel like adding any new thing to something very complex we just add any new bugs uh bunch of weird stuff you're gonna have 20 30 tasks for that behavior tree. you're gonna have a bunch of conditions bunch of additional objects to build in here for this thing i created i basically have ai set and the character and depending on what new things i add i might have one or two or three more things and that's all that you have to manage you have everything in here you don't have to like separate blackboards and also when you're working with ai nothing is exclusive to behavior tree so you can also do environment queries and yeah there is also this uh, new state tree that i tried but uh yeah i should create probably like a more dedicated video related to it because i like the idea at first but after trying it i think it has similar issues to behavior tree and also some very confusing stuff that i think some of that is fixed but still i i'm not a big fan of it especially how it looks we don't have to go into it but yeah it feels like overcome but like there's too much stuff happening uh while generally with code you just want to have the least amount of it so for example in here it's pretty simple it's just what happens over time if there is any specialized functionality that needs to be managed in some place and then you just have your state change what was my old state clean it up what was my new state initialize it and that's about it the biggest downside for this is that because there is not like tutorials for it if you are new to Unreal, it's probably better to just do whatever you can just to learn blueprints and then you can go into it because this is a lot of doing it in your own creating your own system because depending on what i'm doing i might have different stuff in here or manage some stuff differently so there is not tutorials for it so if you're a newbie in unreal i would probably suggest just use some default stuff 
and don't go too much into it just because yeah you're new you just need to learn the tools basically uh but yeah let's now go more into behavior trees let's take a simple example so i think this is the first one should be pretty simple this is maybe like 20 percent more complicated than what i created where it attacks the character comes close to the character if the card is far away like what we have in here is can you see the character rotate towards him and then chase him and if you can't see him then just find patrovich i think in here is just like pick random location i think find random control I'm assuming like pick random location in like an area or something and then move to that location and wait for some time between three to five seconds and then I think you wait another second or something yeah I'm not sure what's happening but basically just go to the player uh, chase the player come to the player and if you don't find the player just find the random location and go to it so I'm a little bit tempted to just <laughs> uh do this with my system just to show you but I don't want to make this video too long it should be like five to ten minutes so if you look at here uh, we already have like two custom tasks so that's two objects in your content browser that you're gonna have to add manage initialize pass in values if there is like a blackboard behind this because you do have to have like a enemy actor and you have target to, to that so has line site probably like updates some blackboard yeah so there is like already a bunch of stuff that's over complicating it while it's so simple just go to the player or find another location and go to that location it's so simple it's uh, mind-numbingly simple so let's look at some more complicated example uh we can do something like this let's see so this seems like it's a uh, dog AI thing where you have if you're hungry if you're barking and if you're tired you have your sequence. so here is where all the complications begin so first you have your sequence and selector so sequence i think if i remember correctly what it basically means is it's gonna trigger whatever is below it in a subtree and whenever it fails it's gonna go out of this sequence and then try the next thing i think and then you have the selector which is gonna go and whenever it succeeds so whatever the first thing succeeds it's gonna go back or it's gonna basically say hey uh if it succeeds it's gonna say hey i'm finished and then sequence is gonna say okay you succeed and stuff like that so all of this stacking stuff like this it makes it really hard to debug because you have to okay so if i'm hungry then i'm gonna try to successfully do something in here and this is gonna be a little bit easier for me because i already look, looked at this example before just for preparing to kind of see some good examples in here uh, but yeah stuff like this selector sequence and combining it, okay what's gonna actually activate and how it's gonna go to the next thing is really confusing and in here I think we are not doing much. So again, this is just like a track. This is like a Boolean. This is uh, what we did in here with a branch. So it's basically just, hey, is this true or not true? okay so how we would do it in my case in like just simple blueprint stuff is just you have a branch in here and then the branch says what would we say so we would just say branch to check if you're hungry and then maybe we would have like um so you would have hungry it would be something like this and do we have some food okay we do we do uh, move to the food we don't have the food we find the ball uh and that's kind of about it so you have like one branch and then just two checks i guess but in here you have like a sequence you have this like conditional checker you have this weight you have the find ball which is custom task that you created in that custom task you have like task initialize you have to do a return for the task is it succeeded or failed and in here you have another check and then you have the custom or not the custom the task that already is provided to you to move and then in the blackboard you also have the football actor so you can move to it basically so yeah you can see kind of how simple it can be but behavior trees just by the design make them five times more complicated than they are yeah so i think that's generally it that i want to cover so behavior trees i don't find them scaling well it's kind of nice if you just want to do the simplest of the simplest so you have like a character that needs to go to location and i, I don't even know go to a place and attack so if you're creating like tower defense game where you literally have like an actor that just has like a reference to a tower and it just goes to the tower and when it's close to the tower attacks the tower maybe behavior but even that i would probably put with like state system in blueprints so i don't i yeah i don't even know where the place of behavior trees are honestly if you're competent with blueprints and also performance so state trees are uh, evaluated on tick while with blueprints you have a little bit more control over how you want to manage performance there so for example let's say my character gets stunned what i can simply do is let's say we have uh Let's say we have this state for some reason and we want to go here uh we have our stun state so we could just set tick 
enabled so we can set it to false and maybe we have a I don't even know we can have like a timer by function something like that you can just say stun wait or something I don't even know what to do so maybe you're stunned for two seconds and then that stun wait function is gonna re-enable the tick and change it to the new state maybe your new state is idle and then after you stun you go to idle and the, and the idle state checks if it needs to attack or chase or maybe you can go right away into chase whatever you want to change it you would do it but we could basically just do this while behaving everything might be more complicated you might have to like do something in the air controller where you freeze the i don't even know if you can do that but yeah you would have like uh, some weight thing uh where would we yeah so you might have like some waiting but then the issues become if you are using weight and there is some more complex stuff that needs to happen so for example while you're stunned you can still die so maybe you have a whole die event that needs to happen or while you're stunned if uh, you take some damage you can wake up so you have to have some additional things so you might have i think in behavior trees they're called uh, evaluators actually let's create uh behavior tree so we can more easily do this if i remember correctly you can have a, oh yeah it's called a service is then bst i think bts okay so you'd use bts service which is basically while a node is executing do something over time or you can do like a touch here so over time it's gonna check the whole new object just to manage more complex behavior well where, where maybe you're stunned a while with a custom thing which you can just have like uh, just a timer running or something like that. you don't have to have a whole new service task that needs to be attached from the right place and you have to debug it and figure out what's triggering at the same time stuff like that yeah also for more complex behavior you don't even have this i think you have like parallel parallel stuff yeah you have even something like this which gets a lot of confused just conceptually to think about where you have like the main service thing that's running or like a, i don't even know it can be like a sequence i think no this has to be a task okay so this is what while main task is run you can have like additional stuff to the side if you want to do complex behavior but then this gets a little bit confusing what's happening i don't know so i, I stopped using them and it I, i'm not regretting it at all basically it's really nice to do everything in blueprints and also the side effect is you just become better at blueprints because you're spending more time in them instead of this system yeah i think that's about it just kind of an alternative to present to you to how you can do your AIs it's really simple it's scaling better and you can also do some fancy debug stuff you can create your own custom thing specialized for your character how you want to debug it how you want to figure out which state he is a bunch of that stuff so yeah this is why I'm not using behavior trees anymore <laughs> Thank you.